Nataka ni gile how to live a holy life. How can we live a holy life? Ndiyo ni tabalizia na yosiku hiya leo. How to live a holy life. Tutangalia jinsi tunayaza ishi maisha masafi. Kutoka kwa tibodeo wa pili sura ya pili mstari wa shina bili. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 22. Wa tibodeo wa pili sura ya pili mstari wa shina bili. Na tibodeo wa pili sura ya pili mstari wa shina bili. Kena sema flee the evil desires of youth. And pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace. Along with those who call on the, on the Lord out of pure heart. Out of pure heart. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the name of the Lord out of pure heart. Lakini zikimbia tamaza ujanani, zikimbia tamaza ujanani, utafute, ukatafute haki na imani na upendo na amani Pamoja na wale wanao wamita. Wamita ugwana pamoja safi. Lakini zikimbie. Lakini zikimbie. Tama zote. Asante. <clears throat> Mustari huu meandikio mkijana na ito Timothy. Na nikataa kusama Timothy alikuwa mmoja mchungaji wa kanisa li na ito Efeso. Ndiya baya alikuwa meachua na Paul ili angali hilo kanisa la Efeso. Na Paul anamwandikia Timothy jinsi ya kuishi maisha masafi. Na Timothy ningataka kusema alikuwa mchungaji. Na wakati tunazungumzia kuhusu dhambi, dhambi haina lengo ya mtu katika imani. Na dhambi inangusha kila mtu, inangusha mtu aliye na umri wa juu na aliye na umri wa chini, aliye na na uzoefu katika imani na yule mchanga katika imani. Na ukifikiria ya kwamba wewe umekoma kiroho sana wewe ukaingia katika dhambi hiyo tu ni dalili ya kusema unaweza ingia maana huo ni uchanga sana wa kiroho maana shetani yuko anatafuta kila mumini ikiwezekana amuingize katika dhambi ili kuwe na ile bali ya tulisema ile kizuizi cha huyu mtu na Mungu hiyo ndio business ya shetani na nyinyi mnaelewa na wengine mmesikia na kuona hata watu ambao wamekuwa na uzoefu wa kuhubiri habari njema bado wengine wamejipata katika matatizo ya dhambi maana shetani naye si kama mtu kakupuuziwa namna hii kana jaribu njia zote ili mtu aingie katika hatia na makosa na ndugu na dada usijidhanie bila usinga don't think of yourself or what you are not shetani anaweza kukuingiza katika matatizo Na wengine ambao wameingia katika matatizo bibili nasema wameingia ili tujifunze na wao. We look at someone like um, Samson, a very powerful man with a special gift of God ambaye ana nguvu za Mungu ndani yake, very powerful. Nguvu za Mungu zinafanya kazi. Aliyakuka ama hakuanguka. Na hivyo kuwa na gift ya Mungu, wewe ni msubiri mzuri, wewe ni mwalimu mzuri. Wewe ni mwimbaji mzuri, wewe ni mchezaji vyombo vizuri, unafanya miujiza does not guarantee that you are safe. Na hivyo Timothy anaambiwa flee. Hii kwa escape ipo katika Biblia mfano ambao nitatoa wakati Joseph na Maria wanaambiwa that they should escape to save their child. Uh, escape to, to save their child. Kwa maana kuna mawaji ya mefanyika ya nafanyika. Uh, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. Ukiangalia pale chini malaika anasema, Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Hiyo ndiyo maana ya jina flee. Escape to Egypt. Toroka kwa haraka iwe sekanavyo. Wende ukaokoe jami yako. And therefore seeing is something to linger. Uh, it's not something to linger or in or pray with. Sin is mortally dangerous to the soul. Kulingana na maneno haya basi na oneshana ya kumba dhambi, siyo kitu cha kuchezea. Ni kitu cha kugopa na kutorokea. Wana Yesu na sufiwe. 
na usifikirie kwamba you have you are experienced and faith that you can uh, unaweza cheza cheza na dhambi haina mtu inaangusha biblia inasema katika samueli ya kwamba how the mighty have fallen hata watu wenye nguvu kama daudi ambao maandiko yanasema ya kwamba ni watu wa moyo wa Mungu dhambi haikucheza na wao na ni hatari kwa mioyo yetu inaweza kuwa mimi itaisha lakini ni hatari kwa mioyo yetu na inaweza ikatuangamiza na hivyo ukiona kuna hatari the bible says flee and therefore Kristo anaulizwa tupigane na dhambi tupigane kabisa tupigane wadumu mpaka tufike bwana asifiwe na mwisho wa hii kitu ni siku ile tutamwona Yesu na kama tutakufa kabla tufe tukiwa salama tuwe na uhakika tutaingia wa Ibrania sura ya 12 mstari wa 4 inasema tupigane kabisa we have to struggle because sin ama uh, fight against sin is a great struggle in a christian life maana sasa umeiona iko wapi iko in mind iko attitude iko omission na iko commission na kama ziko zote iko in mind mama nyakati nyingine our mind inakuwa defiled kwamba Mungu akiangalia haiwezi kuwa na holiness Therefore Paul anasema katika Ibrania 12 that in our struggle against sin we must resist to the point of shedding our blood because it is better for us to to die in holiness than to die baada ya kushindwa na dhambi na hivyo anasema in our sin, in our struggle against sin we have not resisted to that point but if it even comes to the point of resisting to the shedding of blood it is okay lakini tuwe washindi katika jina la bwana praise the name of the living god wa kolosai 3 mstari wa 5 inasema hivi put to death therefore whatsoever belongs to your earthly nature na hivyo anapoandika wa kolosai anasema tuue we put to death everything that belongs to earthly nature tuue kila kitu ambacho kina asli ya kidunia that is sexual immorality impurity rust lust rust and blood no the rust come and the rust la 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 that's our foreign evil desires and greed which is adultery unaona hasa anasema mambo haya we put to to death to yauwe maana tusipo yauwa yatatuua angalia mstari wa sita. because of this the wrath of god is coming because of those things the wrath of god is coming and therefore we need to put them to death lazima tupigane nayo and i'm telling you the bible inasema tupigane nayo hivyo tunaweza kupigana nayo katika jina la bwana praise the name of the living god na kama yusufu tunashauriwa kutoroka kwa dhambi kama joseph we must flee from temptation na kama Daudi alivyoua Goliath we must put to death every evil desire every sin that can cause our lives Warumi 13 mstari wa 11 maandiko yanasema and do this fanya hivi understanding the present time uelewe nyakati za sasa the hour has already come for you to wake up from slumber ya kwamba wakati umefika wa kuamka kutoka kwenye usingizi because our salvation is nearer than when we first believed ya kwamba lazima tuamke na tujue hivi ya kwamba wokovu wetu umekaribia sana kuliko siku ile tuliamini na hivyo kama wokovu wetu ushakaribia sana lazima tuamke na tujue uh, kadri nyakati zinavyokaribia za kufanya kitu ndivyo tunahitajika kuwa na matayarisho mengi kwa ajili ya jambo hilo. Na jameni kama kulikuwa na safari ulikuwa umkia saa moja asubuhi na ukalala saa tatu ya usiku kadri saa moja inavyokaribia ndivyo inavyouliza uamke uanze kujitayarisha. Na hivyo maandiko yanasema kwamba wokovu wetu our salvation rapture imekaribia sana kuliko siku ile tuliamini. Hata imekaribia kuliko Jumapili iliyopita. Hata imekaribia kuliko jana. 
na hivyo Paul anatuliza maneno haya ya kwamba ni mzuri tuamke na tujue nyakati ambayo tuko nayo wokovu wetu unakaribia zaidi kuliko siku ile tuliamini kwa jina la Bwana na hivyo kama tumekaa katika imani miaka mingi nataka nikutangazie imekaribia sasa kile ulianza safari kwa ajili yake na hivyo jitayarishe zaidi ili uishi na Bwana katika jina la Bwana praise the name of the living god Stadu wa 12 nasema the night is nearly over usiku karibu fanya nini uishe the day is almost here hivyo ni kitu saa kumi. na kama basi giza limeanza ku, ku, kuondoka inauliza tuanze kuamka so la, let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light tuweke chini matendo yote ya giza tuweke chini ufisadi wote tutakaze nafsi zetu tuwe tayari kila wakati because the day and the night karibu inaisha na wakati nasema the day is nearly the night is nearly to, uh, to come to an end inamaanisha kuja kwa Bwana kumekaribia sana jamani siku ya kuja kwa Yesu inakaribia kuliko jana na hivyo kama giza karibu liishe tuanzeni kuamka katika jina la Bwana na mstari wa 13 inasema let us behave decently basta tin let us behave decently maana giza ni kuisha ina inaisha sasa acha tuanze ku behave kama watu ambao wanajua mwanga una unafika hebu nauliza swali ulilala pia mko hivi unajibu ulilala hivi hii ni mavazi ya mchana iko ya giza haleluya ndio una nataka kukuona na hiyo hiyo hata ukisikia tuna kamps unabadilisha haraka maana kuna mavazi ya usiku ya usiku na kuna tabia za za usiku salamia naitwa mwambie kuna tabia za usiku hebu salamia kwa mwambie kuna tabia za usiku tabia za usiku ni kali siku moja kama Mungu anaweza fanya kitu saa ine ya usiku ikuwe saa moja ya asubuhi Sasa Paul anasema hivi giza ni kuisha linafanya nini? Linaisha. Na kama giza ni kuisha linaisha, nuru yetu ndio hii inakaribia. Na hivyo anasema stop behaving decently. Lazima ujue kurudi kwa Bwana kumekaribia. Sasa mwangaza wetu umekaribia. Sasa tuanze kujitayarisha. Bwana Yesu nasifiwe. Mstari wa 13 anasema nini? 14. Inasema rada Clothe yourself yani kujivike unajua kuna mavazi ya usiku lakini anasema tujivike vazi linaitwa uh, which is Christ Jesus and do not think about how to gratify the desires of flesh tujivike vazi la mchana na vazi la mchana ni hili linaitwa Yesu Kristo vazi hili lingine ni laibu linatuletea aibu kama hatutaliondoa alafu anamalizia kusema maneno haya i don't think of gratifying the desires of flesh friends you know tamaa za mwili ni nyingi tamaa za kutajirika ni nyingi kiasi tunaweza ingia katika dhambi ili tupate utajiri tamaa za kuwa na vieo Tamaa ni nyingi katika dunia. Jamani tusitimize tamaa za mwili at expense of our day. We must behave decently because the night is almost. Giza karibu ishe na nuru inakaribia. Na hiyo mstari huu wote Paul anataka kusema hivi, saa ya wokovu wetu imekaribia kuliko vile tulianza. Mbona challenge mtu sasa ndio Mungu anataka utumikie zaidi ya vile uliyotumikia. Because sasa ndio ka karibu kufika masaa yake. And therefore, ni nini hiyo ambayo inakuzuia kumtumikia uh, kuwa na usafi katika maisha? Nini hiyo ambayo inaleta uchafu? Ninauliza swali. 
Inawezekana hiyo kasimu ambayo Mungu amekupea katachi ndio kanaleta dhambi. Ya kupanguza. Hii inafanya majaribu ikuwe mingi. Ushauri wa leo ni huu. Use hiyo pesa unazofanya kazi ya maana nayo. Nunue ile hapo. Bariano na nina kwa hili hautakufa kwa kuwa na hiyo ya baton. Kama dhambi ni nini? Ni hii. Afadhali uende heaven bila hii. Kama ndio kikwazo. Na hata kama hiyo ngine inaleta shida, hiyo ngine weka chini, chana nayo kutakutake na Mungu. Paul anasema maneno haya. Kama mkono wangu ndio utafanya nizi fike Afadhali ni niende na bila mkono lakini nisiende jana. Sasa mkono na hii ni gani kubwa jameni? Eh bwana sasa. Amen. Mkono yako. Hii inafanya mpaka watu wamechanganyikiwa. Mtu wako kwa ibada, pastor anahubiri, ako kwa hii. Kama hii ndio shida, uza. Na kwanza zinakuwa na pesa mingi, tumezaweka stock. Uza. And I'm promising you kuna kitu taribika. Uyani? Uwe safe. Lakini ukiona unaitawala, ukibika nyumbani unaiwekaka chini, na unaendelea, asa, una matatizo. Ukisema nisaya kuna unamaya nini? Unalala. Mungu wakifukua tunyumba ya watu ingine hapa. Sa kumi na mwaja ilbado wakifukua maja wako kwa hana, kwa social media. May the Lord help us karika jina la kwa hana. If it is relationships, diyo inakuletea shika, marafiki. Na wanafanya usimfraishe mungu, companies. Yameni lazima uangalia mashika na friends. Maana, mandipa nasema ya kwamba kuna guvu katika urafiki. Na kama marafiki wako kabisa diyo wanafanya usimpedeza mungu. Kwa hile hikima yote mungu wa ikuumba na ae. Jitenge na wawati. Nyingi vijana tafuteni marafiki wenye watu wasaidia. Sivyo nyo wana watumia mapicha baya baya kwa osamu. Ya butu balizi ya hapa.